تنبت جسمك الساعات نحتا وتدعو كالمنون دعاء صدق ألا يا صاح أنت أريد أنت أراك تحب عرسا ذات خدر أبت طلاقها الأكياس بتا تنام الدهر ويحك في غطيط بها حتى إذا مت انتبهتا فكم ذا أنت مخدوع وحتى متى لا ترعوي عنها وحتى أبا بكر دعوتك لو أجبت إلى ما فيه حظك لو عقلت إلى علم تكون به إماما مطاعا إن نهيت وإن أمرت ويجلو ما بعينك من غشاها ويهديك السبيل إذا ضللت وتحمل منه في ناديك تاجا ويكسوك الجمال إذا عريتا ينالك نفعه ما دمت حيا ويبقى ذكره لك إن ذهبتا هو العضب المهند ليس ينبو تصيب به مقاتل من أردت إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صلي وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه وأزواجه أمهات المؤمنين وعلى من اتبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين My dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh I'm your host Kareem Abu Zaid and this is our Sunday edition Ask Imam Kareem live show uh, and normally we have a guest for you uh, today inshallah we have uh, Sheikh uh, Wajdi uh, brother Abu Mus'ab uh, Wajdi uh, Akkari uh, all the way from Saudi Arabia and we have many subjects for him inshallah to share bi uh, ta'ala uh, dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam, uh, with no further delay, I would like to bring the Sheikh in so he can welcome you, inshallah, and you can welcome him. Uh, then we're going to have a couple of announcements to make. Then we can shoot on for our uh, guest, inshallah. Here is Sheikh Abu Mus'ab. You are live, Sheikh Abu Mus'ab. Can you welcome the viewers? You are the anchor. Take a minute, inshallah. Go ahead. جزاكم الله خير السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد Thank you so much Sheikh for having me once again I'm so happy to be with you and I'm so happy to be with our brothers and sisters All right uh, I don't think you do you, you do need any introduction do you Sheikh Abu Musab I, mean, I don't I don't like introductions I like to get straight to it yeah, all right, so can you uh, let me uh, uh, add you here to my right so we are fit together? What about that? We look nice together, I'm mashallah. <laughs> How you doing? Yes, sir. I'm, I'm the old version, you're the young version. <laughs> well, everybody knows it's the other way around. <laughs> Sheikh Abu Musab, what have you been doing lately? Wallahi, I've been trying to uh, keep up with the crazy world we're living in, I guess that's, that's what I could say. It is crazy, quite frankly. It is, it is. Yes. So, uh, you've been working, uh, you've been uh, doing your thing. I mean, is that what you've been doing? Yes, I, I'm working, uh, as you know, at Samsung. We're very busy all the time. MashaAllah. Uh, Alhamdulillah, that was up and running, classes were week clear. We're, we're in the blessings of Allah, we're enjoying the blessings of Allah. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. So, are you been following what's going on in uh, in our part of the world here? I, I know that you keep a very close eye on uh, on uh, on us, you know, uh, which is good. You know, we, we like to be always, uh, you know, checked. Uh, so, <laughs> what is your take on what's been happening lately here in, in this uh, part of life? 
Oh, you know it's me. Can you speak? Uh, can you speak, uh, Abu Musab? Abu Musab. One, yes, sir. I, sir, sir. I think it's gone now. No, just, just, just uh, stop what you were doing. I think we're good now. I stopped the echo from here. Okay. 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 okay, okay good, enough. good enough. No, no, no. You you had an echo now. You started to having an echo now. So just whatever you switched on, switch it back off. Up shift. Up shift. Which is the echo, the upper one or the lower one? I cannot read. Okay, that, so is it better now? Yeah, now it's perfect. MashaAllah. Tabarakallah. Alhamdulillah. Thank you for letting us know, uh, uh, brothers and sisters. Jazakumullah khair. So we were saying, Shaykh, uh, you, you, you guys need so much dua because um, it's like all the fitan, they kind of just travel around the world in spite of Corona and then they land in our right area. there in the West. <laughs> yes, and they okay. they have such a great time over there. I don't know how you guys manage. Yeah, in our backyard. <laughs> so lately, in the front yard, backyard, in the middle of the house, on the rooftop, yeah. uh, in the attic, uh, Sheikh, you didn't leave yeah. a place. So Abu Musab, um, I think I have uh, like maybe five, six subjects I want to address with you. Uh, but hopefully we can allow time for uh, people to ask you questions because alhamdulillah uh, the setup we have we can actually receive phone calls uh, people can call the number 303-500-5101 but not now please um, i want to begin with the french uh, uh, business then i want to go into the uh, imams critiquing imams including you going public and just talking about other people because some people consider this gossiping. Uh, then we want to talk about the LBGT business and, and how far uh, Muslims should go with that. And I want to add one subject, the subject of Hizbiya. Uh, you know, it's lately, uh, subhanAllah, I've been very uh, exposed to this subject. Uh, I guess somehow there is some focus on me now. So that's, <laughs> that's when they start picking on the person. So, um, mm. so we're going to talk about Hizbiya as well. Uh, and then uh, one last subject, which is uh, I really would like you to, uh, to address is uh, how can we best uh, address the subject of uh, responding to people to, who insult uh, our religion, uh, especially the character of our messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Abu Mus'ab, provided that they are ignorant. Provided that okay. they don't know. I, I want to, you know, we know if somebody is learned, we know that. And we know exactly what, you know, what should be done. Nah. But really nah. someone who doesn't know. Someone that there is a potential out there that they can become Muslims. So you, okay. pick, you pick and choose which one. Sheikh, I'm sweating because you just gave me like five topics. Each of each requires, mashallah, to work on. That's why we hours need of that. We need your wisdom very quickly, inshallah. Just, you know, touch on those, please. I need my wisdom too. Uh, because if it doesn't serve me well right now and I don't get tawfiq from Allah, I'm going to be in trouble with you and the audience. May uh, Allah tawfiq. Sheikh. I mean, Ya Rab. Sheikh, you, you, you're the boss. Uh, you run the show. I'm a guest. Can you we, tell me. You start. Can we, I'm begin, ready. can we begin with the French cartoon and what happened lately and what is your take on this? Nah, absolutely. Tayyip. Uh, after praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and asking him to exalt the message of the grand peace of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the first thing I want to say is that I am not surprised. I've never been surprised. I will never be surprised. Uh, what, what people don't realize, and I've said this in my other talks, is that history repeats itself in different eras. Uh, the, the challenges that the Muslims face or the challenges that the believers face in general uh, against the uh, non-Muslims and the disbelievers, the challenges the prophets faced against their own people, they continue to happen today, just different characters, different geographical locations, and different mindset. But the core of the issue remains to be the same. There hasn't been a messenger who was sent 
that was not uh, uh, violated, that was not criticized, that was not uh, verbally abused, physically abused, and yeah, I things that are just wild, absolutely wild. Um, so when when we see this now taking a new form, some Muslims uh, they become emotional, and the first thing I want to do is acknowledge, Alhamdulillah. The fact that your emotions are stirred uh, upon someone speaking ill of the Prophet وسلم, is a beautiful sign of Iman. And it's something that is praiseworthy. However, however, even as emotional beings, Islam actually came to instruct us on how we dispense this emotion. How do we uh, channel it? How do we capitalize on it in a way that is uh, productive? in a way that is effective and a way that is not uh, counterproductive to the point that it creates bigger harm than the existing harm. So yes, you're going to feel hurt that the Prophet ﷺ was cursed and was, was ridiculed. But remember that that was happening at his time. When Allah revealed to him, Verily we have sufficed you from the mockers. That's because people were mocking him back then. They said that he made the many gods a single god. That is something that is absolutely amazing. Um, they continued on and on to say, uh, so whenever it was said to them, La ilaha illallah, they used to be arrogant and they used to say, are we going to leave our gods for a crazy poet? So the Prophet wasallam had been at attacked and called names all throughout uh, history from the beginning of his advent, from the beginning of his da'wah and so were the messengers that preceded him. So don't be surprised that people can be that vile and nasty. Because human beings have the tendency to be extremely vile and nasty. We should be absolutely upset and outraged with what is taking place. However, you should never be surprised because you've been told already in the Quran that this is the methodology, this is the ideology, this is the process of those people, this is how they operate. And they will continue to operate at this level until Yawm al qiyamah there's no stopping them. So are you asking us not to react at all? I mean, that's normal. Don't don't react to them at all, Abu Musab? No, absolutely. I cannot say uh, to anybody not to react. But the question, Ya Sheikh, is what is the reaction that yeah. is expected of you uh, as a Muslim? What is reaction? What is the reaction that is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Uh, and that is the, the defining element in the subject. Are you reacting in a manner where you're actually doing something good for the Muslims? Or are your reactions uh, transgressing against other people so that you are hurting other individuals who may be innocent or are innocent? And then further, you're afflicting more harm upon the Muslims who are already struggling in their yeah. own community. Beautifully, beautifully made, beautifully put together. Jazakallah khaira. So uh, Abu Mus'ab is saying, brothers and sisters in Islam, that the fact that you feel the way that you feel, this is a sign of Iman. Because uh, someone whom you love, uh, whom you care for, is being uh, uh, abused and being uh, harmed. And that should uh, uh, harm you as well. Uh, but Abu Mus'ab... Uh, is also uh, talking about how to uh, uh, present uh, your feelings. How do you process, uh, make sure that uh, this is uh, done towards the work of da'wah, uh, that you're complementing his message, uh, you're complementing Islam. Uh, you know, there is a lot of attention right now, Abu Mus'ab, uh, to hear about Islam. Maybe this is the right time to give da'wah to the people. Do you know what is happening? And uh, So this is a, a, an offered uh, uh, da'wah moment for you because sometimes living in the West uh, where people consider uh, faith and, and, and believing very personal, so you always look for that moment where you can trigger 
a da'wa moment, right? The da'wa moment is, is presented to you. Um, so very well uh, put together. Uh, one last thing before we move on to the next subject, uh, uh, Abu Mus'ab, is uh, what is your take on uh, the uh, French uh, Macron uh, uh, coming out uh, yesterday uh, and uh, uh, offering uh, some sort of explanation? It wasn't an apology, um, but he basically trying to say that you guys misunderstood my words. Uh, I have never been uh, for insulting your messenger and uh, he's claiming that a lot of people uh, abused uh, or uh, taken his words out of context in a way he's 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 backing off but with uh, you know without saying sorry uh, without saying i apologize um how should we now react to that because we have different views now in the ummah uh, regarding uh, what he did. I'm not aware whether you, you're aware or... I don't know whether you heard him uh, yesterday or not on Al Jazeera uh, platform. Did you? No, I did not. Uh, I did not hear him. Uh, but I'll, I'll, uh, my understanding is that he's trying to offer some explanation. And uh, the bottom line is uh, some when, when, you, when you make uh, a drastic... Uh, move uh, in an offensive way then you need an equally drastic move in a defensive way so if if someone were to come and and insult my mother uh, in a in a very nasty way and then come the next day and tell me look you misunderstood me i really didn't mean this or i didn't mean that and so on and so forth that's not going to uh, fix the situation if you're going to fix the situation for you to rectify the damage that has been done, then you need to take a step back. You need to create a, a law that you actually, it, and, and I don't want to invite anyone to create a law because that's another critical issue. Let us just say that I am not for freedom of speech. I, as a Muslim, I am not for, there's no such thing as freedom of speech. I cannot come here and curse everybody out there and belittle everybody out there and say, this is my right to express myself on the expense of violating the rights and the beliefs and the uh, uh, freedom of others. So all you have to do is prevent people from making statements that are offensive to other people's faith. And that is something that is in line with Islam. In fact, Allah prohibited us from cursing the aliha of the mushrikeen so that they don't turn around and curse Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in retaliation. And so if we don't, if we are told, okay, don't curse, uh, don't say anything ill about the Pope himself as a person, we can say no issue, no issue. In return, no one says anything about the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu To leave the subject matter open for everybody to express themselves supposedly under the freedom of speech and then say that an apology is going to fix the situation while people are allowed to continually draw uh, these caricatures of the Prophet Sallallahu that are of insulting nature, then that's like that's like you slapping someone so hard and then you give him a flower afterwards and say يعني, please accept this flower from me no you gotta pay for my hospital bill and you gotta pay for the damage that you've caused and you know if and as in america you can you can have a lawsuit against him for psychological damage that you incurred to do to being beat up or punched and so you know you you can you need to fix the situation at a much higher level than merely saying an apology. And that apology is probably a byproduct of them being economically uh, pinched because of the, uh, the boycotting. Yeah. So now they're like, oh, you know, we're trying to say anything just to kind of get by. No, nah, no, nah, Muslims are not naive. And, you know, you, you got to be more, more realistic than this. He should be more realistic than this. It's a good, it's a good first step, but it's not enough. Got you. So uh, also, uh, I heard one of the uh, uh, politicians, uh, I think uh, he was the uh, previous prime minister of Morocco. His name is Abdel Ilah, uh, I think Nukairan or Nikiran, something like that. He said, um, why don't they uh, issue uh, some sort of a law similar to the anti-Semitic law? Uh, in in uh, in France, you know, you cannot 
in any uh, manner or shape uh, discredit or uh, even question uh, the uh, Nazi uh, uh, doing, which is wrong in, in, in Islamic uh, perspective. But uh, why don't we do something like that? And uh, uh, do, do you think this a law like that would be beneficial to the Muslims in general? So that uh, will not happen again. I mean, of course, of course. Look at all the uh, look at all the harm that could be prevented uh, by ensuring that the the, the Prophet Sallallahu's name is is protected from from any any the average person to be able to to utter it in a disrespectful way. Uh, anything which serves that uh, this is from maqsad min al maqasid. Anything which would lead to that which is obligatory can become obligatory if something of this nature can be done. Uh, to achieve this noble objective, then so be it. And that's just only being fair to the Muslims because we all know, it, even they know, everybody in the world knows that the, the concept of freedom of speech applies to anybody and everybody except Muslims. <laughs> only the Muslims are the ones where you can say anything about them and they have to be all patient and kind and respectful and turn the other cheek. However, anything you say about anyone else, yeah. Uh, can can you know can turn against you? I remember I used a, a word. It's not a curse word, but it's considered derogatory in describing uh, homosexuals. And someone told me, brother, I advise that you remove it from your YouTube video because that video can be taken down. Right. I was like, wow! Out of an hour and a half speech, they're gonna go chase me for a word and take down a video, uh, a word which they've used in describing themselves. Ironically. Uh, but can would that happen if some you you see all these videos on YouTube people saying ill things about the Prophet Muhammad Sallam about Islam? That's all good. So it's like it's one of these the, the biggest hypocrisies in the world, the double standards. But we're not we're not uh, again. The, I began this uh, discussion with you. Is I'm not surprised. We've reached the point, Sheikh, where we shouldn't be surprised when you have certain expectations. You're able to deal with matters in a better way. When you get, get caught off guard and you're surprised, you panic, you say, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. You're all over the place. You can't compose yourself. So we as Muslims, we wind up spreading and, and breaking up and dividing, and we don't have a unified word. When, we're, when we learn how to expect certain things and we have a unified response, then we will be able to better handle these situations, which just it's a matter of time before the cycle comes and it happens again. It's not like this is the first time it happens in France. This is actually maybe phase two or three or four of, of you know, people drawing things. It, it was in other countries first. I think it was in Denmark. It's been all over the place. We should already be familiar with it. Abu Musab, are you surprised that the 1.8 billion Muslims, uh, you see, uh, regardless whether we agree or not, this is the first time we were as an ummah united on a matter that did you notice that in, at your end except the, except the politicians in our country the, the leaders i mean and the, sure. I, I mean in our you know let's leave this alone but i'm talking about the the people themselves uh, regardless of 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 their um, you know uh, <laughs> manhaj <laughs> let, let, let me just be clear here we all came out together and I think this worked out very well, subhanAllah, just a show of unity, uh, move the world, move the world. As usual, of course, I noticed, and that's, and that's what I appreciate uh, from events of this nature, because it is an opportunity for us to reflect on reality. Uh, besides the fact that we're actually uniting in some way, we're actually reflecting on a reality, the reality of the plan and the plot that the world has for Islam and the Muslims. The fact that we're not just, you know, creating unnecessary drama or we're playing around that this is all real and substantiated with evidence. The fact that there's a, an out, outright war against Islam, Islam from spreading, Islam from being popularized, Islam from being normalized in the countries. Uh, you, you start to see the reality that otherwise you are oblivious to, especially those of us that, you know, I'm not there now, but those of us who live in the West, they can testify to this. Now you see what, what people are really about. So when these events happen, 
it's always it's it's the materialization of the promise of Allah Azza wa Jal. When Allah says وَرَفَعْنَا لَكَ ذِكْرَكَ and Allah says إِنَّ شَانِئَكَ هُوَ الْأَبْتَرِ we have raised your status and your remembrance and the one who hates you is the one who will be cut off you get amazed at how one person went within hours he became like a joke across the world in the muslim world at least and on the other side the prophet's name was mentioned so many times by so many people on earth it is absolutely unbelievable but believable do you understand how something that is supposed to when they try to attack him in the mere attack allah uses these opportunities so that his name now is all over the place people that otherwise their facebook post is always about you know i don't know what about haram and nakedness and, and women <laughs> now they're putting a post i, I love muhammad I, I saw a video <laughs> Of, yeah. uh, this is the funniest thing. I, wallah, I saw that video at two o'clock in the morning. I was working on uh, on uh, a paper uh, at two o'clock in the morning. My and I, my, I woke up my wife because I was laughing. I couldn't control myself. This guy is is a. Uh, uh, I don't want to say what his nationality, but I think he's living in uh, somewhere in Europe, and he has a bar, and he's extremely upset. And he is removing the French liquor from his bar, saying, I'm going to boycott the French liquor. <laughs> you know, so the, I couldn't believe The guy is real, and he's saying it in, in, in three, four languages. Anybody who insult my messenger, I will boycott his, uh, his products. And he's actually removing the, uh, the he's taking the, the liquor out of his, uh, his shelves. Meanwhile, he's leaving the other alcohol there because that's okay. But this one is not. They're okay. not French, right? <laughs> well, we have some amazing people in our ummah. We can all agree that we have some amazing individuals in our ummah. That's just a, uh, one example. You and you never know. This for that person again. For that person, this could be a sheikh the trigger. Right. This so, could uh, be that awakening. The wake Allah up. And what will happen to him next yeah, or yeah. the day after? Yeah. For many people that are completely distant uh, from Islam. When they feel that their prophet is being uh, uh, ridiculed, it, it, it ignites a certain uh, iman, iman and love, which was otherwise uh, extinguished. And then subhanAllah, it's a, it's a source of guidance for the Muslims and for the non-Muslims. Also, history proves that anyone who speaks ill about the Prophet ﷺ, eventually, eventually Islam will creep up into their lives. SubhanAllah. How? Who, when, where? No one knows. No I mean, one knows. But the, it's... we have the ideal example. The uh, I think was he Danish or Norwegian? The PM, the or or some. Hey. Uh, was he Danish or uh, Danish? Danish now. Yeah, yeah. If who, I who, remember he, correctly, was yeah, yeah, and he, he embraced Islam. Yeah, yeah. Who became a Muslim? Okay, uh, you know, you, you you said that we have in our ummah amazing people. So we have those people of uh, Abu Musab, uh, you know, who basically create a list of uh, scholars. Let's say they are scholars. I mean, we're not going to question their, their knowledge. And they say these are the perfect people that you should take knowledge from. Anyone else who is not, um, uh, what is the verb here, recognized or approved by them, uh, you should not listen to them and rather uh, you should actually... Uh, claim them to be unworn people, not to listen to them. Uh, this is, uh, we, we call them madakhila, uh, in, in reference to Sheikh uh, Hadi al-Madkhali, Wadi'a bin Rabi'a al-Madkhali, sorry, Rabi'a, not, not, uh, not Hadi, Rabi'a yeah. al-Madkhali. Uh, of course, some other people used Sheikh Aman al-Jami, and I don't like that, uh, because I don't think Sheikh Aman al-Jami was, was any of that. Uh, but uh, Sheikh Rabia, يعني, uh, there is some messages in his lectures that we, we heard that he actually condoned uh, this approach. Um, so in every little town, you get one or two people who walk around the masajid and they see who is giving lectures and who is being listened to. And they start actually warning the people against this individual. And of course, you got a lot of layman Muslims who are trying to learn the religion. And in a way, you know, so 
what is your take on this to begin with as a trending? Um, and how, uh, me and you, we know how to deal with those. I'm, I, I listened to the advice of my sheikh, uh, Abu Ishaq al Hawaini uh, and, and uh, another sheikh I love, uh, Ahmed al Naqib. He said, just make dua for them, that's all. Don't do anything else, but just make dua. But I'm talking about the brothers who are listening to you and to me now. How should they respond to them and should they listen to them? طيب. The first thing is, is let's, let's, let's be, I want to be fair. I, I don't want to call them madakhila, uh, Sheikh, because uh, Sheikh Rabia, uh, even though, like any Sheikh, there's, there, he, is, he has good and he has some, some issues here and there, just like every Sheikh had issues here and there. Perhaps at some point there were more issues related to the matters of tabdi' and jarh and jarh and ta'deel and so on and so forth. Uh, maybe it went a little overboard, uh, possibly because the people in his circle went overboard and they would bring in uh, inaccurate information, false information, and then, you know, uh, warnings would be issued. There was a lot of confusion going on. I, I would rather not call them uh, madakhila just Agreed. so that we don't associate it with the uh, Sheikh Rabia and then uh, it becomes, it becomes a, a, another issue. Uh, because the sheikh actually at some point started really, uh, you know, going down, really, really uh, attacking them, uh, at least some of them for, for their violation on their carelessness. So whether you want to call them pseudo Salafis, uh, that's one term that is used. Uh, but regardless, they are a group of brothers and you're just coming into the scene uh, recently, a sheikh. I've been dealing with this since I was in Los Angeles. And that's back in 2005, 2004, 16 years ago. Uh, those brothers, uh, يعني, they have, they have uh, I would say, ghira, uh, 